Welcome back to Mason Talks. So yesterday, the Cleveland Browns were once again embarrassed in a professional football game. Yesterday, they never really stood a chance. It was against the New England Patriots, who were 7-0, now 8-0, undefeated. They look unstoppable. But the Browns buried themselves early on. They screwed themselves over. Stupid turnovers, stupid penalties, endless amounts of penalties, it seems like at this point. The Browns just didn't look prepared. They didn't look like a professional football team. And that's kind of been the norm this season with Freddie Kitchens. If you had to describe Freddie Kitchens' first season as head coach in the NFL, let me know in the comments what one word would you use. But for me, it would be unprepared. Unprepared. Because that's what the Browns have been for every single game. Except for one. The Baltimore Ravens game. I mean, even the Jets win. They didn't look prepared. They didn't look prepared yesterday. That's on Freddie Kitchens. And it's more concerning than usual because it was coming off of a bye week. That was the one thing we had going for us in this game. The Patriots were on a short week. We were on a long week. We had a bye week. We had multiple... We had so we had like two weeks to prepare for this game. And they looked awful. The Browns looked awful again. Freddie Kitchens is clearly the biggest concern with this team by far. And, you know, coming out of the bye week unprepared, that's concerning. I mean, yesterday, in yesterday's game, it was embarrassing. Being, you know, me as somebody who in the offseason was an advocate for Freddie Kitchens. Yesterday was awful. I mean, first of all, the punt. What what, what happened? <laughs> like, Freddie, you're losing the game by multiple touchdowns. It's 4th and 11. If your, punt, if your punt unit runs out on the field, just punt it. I don't care if you wanted to go for it. At that point, just kick the ball away. If you had punted the ball yesterday, people would have called you a bad coach. But you didn't punt the ball. And you didn't want to waste the time out. So you had one of your players intentionally false start to give you more time, move you back to 4th and 16. Obviously, you didn't get the first down. If you had just punted it, you would have been called a bad coach. But because you didn't just punt it, people are calling you a moron. And that, frankly, was an incredibly moronic decision by Freddie Kitchens. Freddie just, frankly, doesn't seem like he knows what he's doing. And that's completely understandable. I mean, leading up to this year, he had no prior meaningful experience, really. The offense looked good last year. The Browns wanted to take a risk and let Freddie be the head coach. And so far, it's not working. So far, it's not working at all. There weren't many positives yesterday. The only positives that I took away from that game was that the Browns came back a little bit. They made, they made an effort. They didn't just give up like they did in the 49ers game. I thought Baker looked better than usual. I know that people were, you know, critis- very critical of him because of the shovel pass directly to the Patriots, which was an awful play, horrible look. But Baker Mayfield this season, through however many weeks we've been through now, like eight weeks, has been the best quarterback against the New, the New England Patriots. He's done better than any other quarterback in the league against New England. I thought Baker looked improved. Nick Chubb had a great game, but it was tarnished because of mistakes. Because he wasn't ready to play. He had two fumbles. The defense. I thought there were some moments for the defense. Olivier Vernon. Finally looking like he was worth the trade. (laughs) There weren't many positives. There were a lot of negatives. And that's because of Freddie Kitchens. 
And after that game, there were a lot of people calling for Freddie to be fired. And I understand why you would want that. I can completely understand why you would be calling for Freddie Kitchens to be shown the door. But to me, there is absolutely no way Freddie Kitchens should be fired right now. Today, in this game, through eight weeks of the season, there is no way he should be fired. Last year, Hugh Jackson was awful. Hugh Jackson and Todd Haley were fighting. They couldn't seem to get on the same page. Both of them got fired. The Browns then the, the Browns ended up having an exciting end to the year. They almost made the playoffs. Firing Hugh Jackson gave the team hope. And I think Browns fans just kind of want some hope right now. They kind of want something to be excited about. And that to them is firing Freddie Kitchens. And I'm not going to defend Freddie Kitchens. Like, if this keeps up, he should absolutely be fired in the offseason. But you can't fire a coach midseason two years in a row. It's not going to make anything better. It'll only make things worse. This Browns team, the performances that they've been putting out there on the field, it's not just on one man. It's not just solely Freddie Kitchens. It's the whole coaching staff. It's Freddie. It's Todd Munkin. It's Steve Wilkes. It's Ryan Lindley, the quarterback's coach. The whole coaching staff needs to be held accountable, not just Freddie Kitchens. If you fire Freddie Kitchens midseason... Not only is it going to not get any better, because it won't get any better. Todd Munkin's not going to do any better. Steve Wilkes won't do any better. Stump Mitchell. I mean, for last year, Freddie Kitchens was promoted to offensive coordinator. You want Stump Mitchell to be the offensive coordinator? That's not going to make things better. It'll only make things worse for a young roster like this. Just shuffling through head coaches like that. Like, Baker Mayfield, if you fire Freddie Kitchens midseason, Baker Mayfield will have had four head coaches in two years. Hugh Jackson, Greg Williams, Freddie Kitchens, and whoever the interim would be. You can't do that to a young team like this. I'll admit, the Browns look kind of hopeless right now. But you can't fire Freddie Kitchens midseason. That's not an option in my mind. If the Browns resort to firing him, like if the if we come out next week against Denver and Freddie Kitchens is not the head coach, everybody should be fired. The whole everybody not named Jimmy Haslam should be fired. Even Jimmy Haslam, I would love it if you know every I, clean the house. It's a complete and utter failure if you have to fire your head coach before we even really get to the halfway mark of this season. We just kind of have to stick it out. And hope, hope that a miracle happens. Hope that Freddie Kitchens is able to pull something out of somewhere. Maybe somehow, miraculously, in the final weeks of this season, become a good head coach. <laughs> because I'm so, ho- like, literally, I don't know where to turn. There's really nothing the Browns can do. There's nothing that's going to save this season. There's no one thing that's going to save this season. The Browns are not completely eliminated from playoff talks yet. I know that it looks very glum right now, but there have been a couple of teams, not many, there's been like three teams in recent history to make the playoffs after starting two and five. First, you have the Houston Texans who started two and five in 2015. They finished the season seven and two, won the AFC South, and they lost to a Chiefs team that opened one and five in that season and ended up winning 10 straight. And, you know, that's that's kind of crazy that the two teams that start, started awful ended up playing each other in the playoffs. But those two teams did it. And then in 2011, the Denver Broncos went 2-5 and five and finished 8-8 eight and eight that season with Tim Tebow as their quarterback. And they ended up winning in the playoffs against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So it has been done in the past. Two and five teams have made the playoffs in the pa- in the past. But it's not looking good. <laughs> it's not. I, I was still confident about the playoffs last week, but that was assuming they made improvements in the bye week, and they didn't. 
that bye week thing, that's to me the most concerning part about yesterday's loss. Like if that was just you know, if that was just a, 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 like if that was an early season loss for the Browns, I would have been pretty confident about it because the Browns played a they played a solid game with the Patriots whatever, you know, there were there were missteps and everything. But the fact that it was after the bye week, which is supposed to be the week where you clean things up, all the all the early season mistakes, you're supposed to get those all sorted out. So you can make a good a good run down the second half of the of the season, but no, we look maybe worse than than the, like the Seahawks game. We looked a lot better in that Seahawks game than we did yesterday. Somehow we got worse. They're just undisciplined. They're not. They're unready. They're never ready for any of these games. It's on the coaching staff, but you can't do anything about it. So, today, there's been some trade news surrounding the Cleveland Browns. They're trying to figure out, you know, some sort of, some sort of hope. They're trying to, to find, you know, make something out of nothing, trying to make some trades happen. And one trade that happened today that really, I just don't understand. Like, I don't understand why this situation happened. Jannard Avery is now a member of of the Philadelphia Eagles. The Browns shipped him to Philly. Former fifth round pick. We got a fourth round pick in return. I'm not, I mean, that's not a positive. I would have rather had Jannard Avery playing. What happened to Jannard Avery? By the way, I'm not blaming Avery. The coaching staff should have been playing him. Somewhere in the game. Find a role for Jannard Avery. Jannard Avery was one of the best young prospects on our team last season. All offseason, when you talked about the defense, people were saying, they were saying Miles Garrett, Denzel Ward, Demarius Randall, Jannard Avery. Like, we were talking about Jannard Avery as a guy who could potentially be one of the, you know, core members of the defense. And he never played. He had two tackles. With the Browns. That's all he had. He was only active for like three games. And he made two tackles. I blame that on Steve Wilkes. I blame that on Freddie Kitchens. You should have all your talent on the field. There were some games where the defense could have used some help. The defense could have used a little bit of energy off the bench. They could have used some more rotational pieces. There were definitely games where you could have used Jannard Avery, and they didn't. Somehow, they weren't able to work a way for Jannard Avery to be a member of this team. Good coaches, good organizations, they make all the talent fit. They make all the talent work. And the Browns have not been doing that. The Browns haven't been doing that at all. The offense has looked like shambles. They've they've been in shambles at some points. The defense dealt with injuries early on, but I mean even without the injuries there were there were moments there, like the defense hasn't been that bad, but there's definitely been some some like confusion because of talent and when to use talent, how to use talent. The Browns just haven't been able to figure it out, and that's definitely concerning. The other piece of trade news, the other the other rumor sailing out there, is in regards to Washington Redskins tackle. Trent Williams. So Ian Rappaport reported that the Redskins who have been, you know, denying any they they they've been completely ignoring trade calls on Trent Williams. Apparently something has changed because now today as we're getting closer to the trade deadline, the Redskins are now open to trade talks for Trent Williams. Now, another little interesting uh, tidbit apparently one team 
has already offered a second round pick. One undisclosed team. I have no doubt in my mind. That's John Dorsey and the Cleveland Browns. John Dorsey's been wanting Trent Williams so bad. I would not be shocked if that that second round pick that was thrown out there in rumors to, you know, try to increase the price from other teams. I would not be shocked if that was John Dorsey and the Cleveland Browns. But, you know, frankly at this point with where we are in the season and how poorly the team looked against the Patriots, I don't really want Trent Williams anymore. <laughs> like I wanted Trent Williams earlier on because I thought that he could help the team. I thought that he could help Baker get comfortable. I thought he could help that offensive line perform better. But bringing in Trent Williams, that's not going to help anything anymore. That's not going to make things better like I thought maybe it would. Because the offensive line isn't the problem right now like it was earlier in the season. The problem is the coaching staff and the team like it's the it's the 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 uh the practice whatever it is you know it's not there's no quick fix to this which is another reason why you can't just you know fire your head coach there's no one player there's no one piece that's going to fix the Cleveland Browns this is an organizational problem and the only person who can fix it is Freddie Kitchens Trent Williams isn't going to fix anything. He's a great tackle. I mean, if we were if we were, you know, if we were 5 and 2 or whatever, if we were, you know, 6 and 2 and we were making a playoff push and the offensive line had a hole at left tackle, which it does right now because Justin McCray is not that great, definitely I'd want to trade for Trent Williams. I'd be, you know, considering a second round pick for Trent Williams, but not right now. Not when you're 2 and 5 and things are looking worse every week. You need assets. You need draft picks that you can turn into, you know, pieces for next season. You can't just be giving out draft picks for players who might only be here, you know, a year or two. Injury-prone players at that. I wanted Trent Williams initially, but at 2-5, and five, that's not going to help anything. And I hope that John Dorsey doesn't overpay for Trent Williams in an act of uh, desperation because he's not going to fix anything. Trent Williams with a good head coach, that'd be great. That might work. But Trent Williams with Freddie Kitchens right now, that's not going <laughs> to that's not going to make anything better. The Browns need to get their act together fast if they want to make any playoff push. They're going to start to they're going to need to start winning a lot like now. This is the time. This is this is when you got to grind. This is the easiest part. I mean, we had the second toughest first half of the schedule. You're now going to have the second easiest second half of the schedule. None of these games are a guarantee. Especially not with how the Browns have been playing and how inconsistent they've been. But this is your moment now. This is if you want to make a run, make things interesting. This is when you have to get your act together. Starting next Sunday at 425 against the Denver Broncos. That's a winnable game. Denver has a good defense, but they're going to be without their starting quarterback, Joe Flacco. Brandon Allen will be the starter for Denver. He was a sixth round pick in 2016 by the Jaguars, and he's never played in the regular season. He's 27, and he has no NFL experience, playing at least. Denver's got a great defense, but with an offense that bad? That's your opportunity to get things right. Freddie Kitchens, Todd Munkin, Steve Wilkes, Baker Mayfield. These guys need to start leading this team. They need to start making players accountable for their mistakes whether it be you know clutch dropped passes by Odell Beckham when they need to catch the most whether it's fumbles at the five yard line by Nick Chubb whether it's horrible shovel passes 
from Baker Mayfield or if it's a you know if it's if it's Justin McCray with a false start the sloppiness needs to stop it needed to stop in week three week two week one it needed to stop at the end of the preseason if the Browns want to be taken seriously they need to start playing like a professional football team this is a good opportunity this upcoming Sunday that's a bad Denver team that's a reeling Denver team I'm not guaranteeing anything. I'm not even confident. My confidence in the Browns has been stolen again. But that's your opportunity. If you want to get things right, be ready Sunday against the Denver Broncos. Thanks for listening to the Mason Talk Sports Show. I will see you in my next episode. Goodbye.